Hello and welcome everyone. Today's topic is plasma exchange in the intensive care unit. There are two mechanisms of action of therapeutic plasma exchange. First is removal of a pathogenic substance from the plasma, like IgG in myasthenia gravis or IgM in Waldenstrom macroglobulinemia. And second is delivery of large amounts of deficient plasma components, like ADAMTS13 in thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura. Disorders for which TPE is a recognized first line treatment are acute inflammatory demyelinating polyradiculon uropathy, GB syndrome, good pasture syndrome, hyperviscosity syndrome, in hypergammaglobulinemia, especially Waldenstrom macroglobulinemia, catastrophic antiphospholipid syndrome, myasthenia gravis, NMDA receptor antibody encephalitis thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura and acute liver failure. Disorders for which TPE is a recognized as a second-line treatment, in alone or in combined, are refractory thyroid storm, ANCA-associated vasculitis with diffuse alveolar hemorrhage, acute disseminated encephalomyelitis, atypical hemolytic uremic syndrome, autoimmune hemolytic anemia, chronic acquired demyelinating polyneuropathies, Lambert-Eaton myasthenic syndrome, Hashimoto's encephalopathy. Disorders for which TPE may be used in the ICU as rescue therapy despite lack of strong evidence about efficacy are hit with progressive thrombosis, cryoglobulinemia vasculitis, pancreatitis with severe hypertriglyceridemia, perineoplastic neurological syndromes, specific types of poisoning, Systemic lupus erythematosus with severe vasculitic complications including lupus cerebritis and pneumonitis. Kinetic models for prediction of substance removal have been developed. The half-life and volume of distribution of the substance to be removed must be considered when planning the intensity and frequency of TPE sessions. The plasma volume to be replaced is determined by calculating the total blood volume and the total plasma volume, that is TPV, of the patient. The 2019 ASFA recommendations suggest exchanging 1.0 to 1.5 times the individually calculated TPV. Therapeutic goals of TPE will depend on the pathophysiology of the disease. During TPE, the plasma can be separated from the corpuscular components of the blood by centrifugation, membrane filtration, or both. Centrifugation is based on the differences in density of the various blood components. Filtration takes advantage of differences in particle size to separate plasma from cells. Currently licensed TPE devices can operate with a continuous or an intermittent flow. Both, centrifugal and membrane-based devices are available. In afferases units based in transfusion medicine or hematology departments, TPE is usually performed with centrifugal systems. In most nephrology departments and ICUs, the preferred devices are membrane-based, including multifunctional RRT machines. To reduce costs and donor exposures, up to 30% of the replacement fluid may be a suitable crystalloid. In low-resource healthcare systems, plasma, crystalloid, or non-plasma colloid beyond plasma removal efficiency, or PRE, is the metric used to compare TPE devices. It describes the fraction of plasma that passes through the device and is removed per procedure. The vascular access required for the procedure are. For centrifugal machine a normal 7 French central line is enough. For membrane machines a dialysis line is required. Time of procedure depends based on flow. Thus centrifugal machines take more time. Anticoagulation can be done with citrate or heparin. According to the World Affairs' Registry, 73% of procedures were provided with citrate anticoagulation. The advantages and disadvantages are shown in the table. Albumin or plasma can be used as replacement fluid, alone or in combination, and with or without the addition of a crystalloid such as saline. Albumin is used most often, as it is associated with a lower frequency of allergic or immune reactions but it's expensive. One can reduce cost by using cryptoloid as much as possible that is up to 30% of fluid required to cut cost. The table shows all advantages and disadvantages. The complications are related to the vascular access, the anticoagulation used, and the reaction to replacement fluids. Overall the percentage of complications is less than 20%. Regarding drug removal by TPE. 
Limited data and information is available but it's extremely important in critically ill patients. To summarize here are some key points. The decision to initiate TPE should be based on the rationale of mechanism of action. Either to remove or add something in plasma. Before initiation, diagnositic test for the disease and blood grouping is mandatory. The changes in hemostasis and coagulation tests induced by TPE must be considered when interpreting test results and making clinical decisions. More is not necessarily better. Standard TPE replaces 1.0 to 1.5 times the TPV, is usually enough. In patients who also require RRT, TPE should be performed first unless there are potentially life-threatening electrolyte disturbances mandating urgent RRT. Monitor drug levels especially antibiotics.